But you just were, you just said. Ugh, just work. Today we're gonna to review smart coffee scales. This review I thought would be easy. I was just gonna buy these sets of scales, do some basic testing on features, and declare a winner. That isn't what happened. That's not what this review is going to be. But well, we're gonna dive into the world of smart scales. Now, briefly, I wanna tell the story of scales in coffee. I think going back to 2012 was when the sort of the, the Hario coffee scales launched, right? When we started to, to get really serious about weighing our pour overs, our V60s, whatever we were making. Now I confess, I had a little bit of a hand in these. Um, the reason that they have varying levels of accuracy, they're, they're kind of 0.1 at zero to 200 grams or 0.5 at 200 to 500 grams. That's, that's my fault, that was my suggestion. I earned no money from these. I was never paid for this advice to Hario, but, but it was my suggestion as a way to let you go all the way up to two kilos but uh, have accuracy where you needed it. To make it 0.1 uh, gram accurate all the way up to two kilos would have made it much more expensive than it was. So this was the kind of compromise. That's by the by. This thing was a set of scales that was designed uh, or focused on making coffee. And along with your weighing function, you had a timer function. And that's kind of what sets coffee scales apart from other things. But this was the beginning. And these work like just about all kitchen scales work. You have a base here, and then you have a whey pan here. And connecting the whey pan to the base is a piece of metal called a load cell. And as that piece of metal bends under weight, you can measure the varying um, current across that piece of metal, and you can convert that into a weight. That little load cell is probably the same in pretty much all the scales here. Load cells are very simple things. The software, what you do with that information, that's where things get tricky. Now, no question, the game was changed when Akaya kickstarted their first set of coffee scales, I think the Pearl set of coffee scales. And they did something kind of interesting. They took this little whey pan on top of this little base and they just turned it upside down. So suddenly your whey pan was your base and your base was on top is where everything was. And this means that the scales were kind of spongy because everything you pushed was pushing down on the whey pan. But it meant that water would run off the edge and down and couldn't get back up inside to mess with your electronics. In most sets of scales, having it this way around with the whey pan on top left the electronics exposed to water and that was bad. Now here in front of me, I have seven sets of scales, most of which I've paid for thanks to the support of Patreon. Now people support me each month on Patreon, giving me a budget to go out and buy these things and therefore have an unbiased opinion about them. And that way I'm not relying on manufacturers giving them to me and I'm not spending the money out of pocket because there's about a thousand dollars worth of scales here, which is, which is a lot. Here I have the Timmermore Black Mirror Scale. It's about 99 euros, 100 euros, I think I paid for this. Here, uh, which I already owned, is the Scale. Uh, this I have because it connects to the Decent, but it is a smart scale worth talking about. This is $99. This is the Brewista Smart Scale. I think this is about 100 pounds. This is the Felicita Incline. It's about $115. Here is the new Akaya Pearl Model S, which is $185, or about £185 in the UK. And on the end is the Heroya Jimmy, which is about £270, or I think like $285, $290 online in the US, which is a lot. Initially, we're gonna do two tests. We're gonna do a, a boot up test, which is how long does it take from push and go to being ready to, to weigh. And then we're gonna do a test to see what the lag is like. So I'm just gonna dose about 30 grams of coffee onto each scale and see how long it takes to register the correct final weight. Then we're gonna talk about apps, but we'll come back to that in a second. So let's just dive into uh, those two tests first of all. So now we need to talk about apps because apps are the way that these things become 
in theory, smart. So each of these does have an iOS app that I have downloaded onto my phone. Uh, I think most of them support Android, but I'm not sure how well. I'm not gonna make coffee with each scale because that would be reasonably wasteful and I try to waste less these days. I'll just be pouring water from a pouring kettle into a brewer to mimic the kind of pouring that you would have with a B60. It should let us see how the apps work and I'll let you see what I see on my screen. So let's start with the Timmermore Black Mirror. So, oh, that's good news. And it's crashed immediately. And there we go. Let's try that one more time. And crash. Right. What, a, what an auspicious start for a smart scale. We finally have an app connected to the phone, which is terribly nice. Uh, only took deleting and reinstalling the app, which is perhaps not the ideal user experience. Now, what you can see from the app is that you have uh, some level of preloaded recipe in here. And if you jump into the settings, it'll let you play with your ratio, which is a very common thing here. A lot of them want to do the kind of 1 to 14, 1 to 15 thing, which I've said I'm not an enormous fan of. Now, what's frustrating to me is that I might want to brew 30 grams to say 500, but because I'm stuck in a ratio slider, I can't actually get it to do that. The closest I can get is 510. Now, you can select your bean. Really quite an odd selection here. You've got Mandelin, Guatemala, a weirdly spelt Yogachev, Sidamo, but no Ethiopia. You've got Yunnan, which is good, but also Pakamara, which is a variety. Blue Mountain, Geisha, Kona, Kenya. I don't get it. I'm really a little bit confused. Okay, so we're ready to brew. I'm gonna brew just over here to try and prevent too much sound of brewing coming through on the microphone. So let's go. Let's, let's start with a loud beep. So what you get here on this screen is a pretty typical kind of brew print. I think that's a Kaya's term for it, but a sort of simple chart showing cumulative weight over time. So you'd have like a, a bloom phase, you'd let it run for a while more, and then add more. Now, one thing about the scale is it will tell you off if it thinks you're brewing a bit too aggressively. Very loudly will tell you off. I don't really know what triggers it. There's not really a, an obvious setting to control that. It obviously just thought I was pouring my water too quickly. But it doesn't beep to tell me I've hit my target weight, which seems odd. And it doesn't really care that I've gotten there too quickly. Just if you hit a certain grams per second, I think on the flow rate, then that's that's bad. Hit save. And I get to comment, is it excellent? Is it good, average, poor, bad? Let's talk about that later. There's some flavor descriptors here. You can add them, you can use theirs. There's pretty limited choices. I can track which device I used. Then you get your brew print down there and I can save that as a record and you can share it, but into WeChat, which is something not a lot of people outside of mainland China are really using. And there you go, you've, you've brewed. Uh, that is the, that's the black mirror when it, when it works. So a little bit buggy, I know it's really just kind of just out of beta, but um, certainly a slightly frustrating experience there to start with. And I'm not hugely sure that the way it's trying to guide me into brewing is particularly intuitive or helpful. And now we have the Scale app, which has, I think, the ugliest app I think I could think of. It looks like um, someone who's designed this has done like a bad job porting it to iOS from something else. The layout is all screwy and messed up. The kind of mixed sort of typography and, and everything else, it's, it's, not, it's not much fun. Now, You've got a few little things here. You've got a, a timer. It's got a it's got a kind of unit function, which might be some sort of brew ratio thing. I don't really understand. But anyway, let's start. And all it's doing is is sort of tracking weight uh, and tracking time, which is pleasantly simple, frankly. Uh, there's no charting of this data. It's just a simple graphical display. It's just an ugly one. Uh, if I'm honest. So as much as it might be smart, it's not it's not hugely smart. There's a start stop for the timer. There's no option to save anything here. But that's that that's the app. It's not remotely intuitive uh, to me. It's not particularly helpful, and it's not in any way beautiful. Yeah, it's not good. Okay, next up on our list is the Felicita Incline. Let's open up that app. Let's open up this uh, scale. Give it a little boot up. And something's crashed or hung, I don't really know. Uh, it just is saying Feliciter on the scale. Are you annoyed you've got weight on you? So secret here apparently is to, to 
open the scale first and then open the app, which seems to me probably like a bug, not the first. So uh, again, a pretty minimal app, a little bit more beautiful than the scale app, though essentially showing you the same data at the beginning. There is the opportunity to build out a recipe. Why this is black type against a dark background, I have no idea. Again, we've got a weird selection of origins, which come with two pre-ticked, oh no, can we tick multiple? What's happening here? We've got a misspelled Colombia, always a win. Uh, Brazil, Panama, I don't understand. Salvatore, I assume it's supposed to be El Salvador. Cameroon, let's pretend we're brewing some coffee from Cameroon. We can track our brew tools and our kettle. I don't know why I track those things, I guess if I was tracking everything I might. And then let's add some coffee in here. Oh, goodness me, that's an unpleasant way to put in data. Now it's quite easy to mistap the OK button and then end up moving your ratio out there. And again, I can't change my water to be what I want it to be. I'm stuck with a fixed ratio thing. Deep breath and let's hit go. Let's see what happens. So, ooh, a hot water injection is happening here. Oh my Lord. This is hideous and confusing. This chart is the least intuitive thing I think I've ever seen. So you're getting a blueprint, but at the same time, this ridiculous sort of very large uh, brew rate, I guess, pour rate, flow rate display that looks like it was designed in the mid eighties. Let's go with that. I mean, that orange and blue combo is delightful. The pixelated nature and the slow refresh rate it's, it's all bad. Uh, I don't, I don't feel good. It's steaming. Oh wait, we're blooming, but it's not blooming, it's steaming. So not smart enough to realize that I poured my entire water weight in here, but it now it knows that I've paused. It's paused the timer, which is particularly weird because you would usually include your bloom time in your pour time. And in a moment, eventually, when we're done steaming in so many ways, we can begin again. The coffee is good. The coffee is good. Click save. I presume that's just touched the button. Oh, and I get a blueprint and I can edit my remarks. It was a flowery and nutty. No, it's either flowery or nutty. It's a little bit of a mess. I I'm not sure why rough deserves a, a bean symbol either. That's kind of weird. And let's save that. And there we go. I'm now back at a screen where it's telling me to click save again, but we know I'm done. If I click save, well, I go back to here, but it's lost all my data. So let's just come out of there. I've saved it. Where does it go? Where, where does it go? Okay, your recipe is saved somewhere magically that you can't access anymore. Did I just lose my mind? I'm done. I'm done with this particular scale for today. This app is also bad. So now, before we dive into the suite of Akaya apps, we're gonna talk about the Heroya Jimmy, the most expensive uh, scale we have here. So let's try turning it on first. Good. Let's open up Jimmy, our friendly app. And we're greeted by yet another reasonably unattractive screen. You've got espresso mode, pour over mode, training mode, and display mode. I'm not sure whether the letter J is, is there to represent display mode, but, but that's essentially just gonna mirror what we see here on the phone, which for a scale with a remote detachable thing, I don't know why you'd need, the whole point of this scale is that you, you know, you got this thing to put where you want to be and then also have your phone. I don't, I don't know when I would need to have two displays at any one time. Uh, let's look at training mode. Now this will train you to pour at a specific flow rate. Um, I'm going to train for 30 seconds at five grams a second. Let's start training. So, uh, how skilled am I at the old flow rate? So there we go, a bit aggressive. There we go, six grams. There we go. Oh, I get a score. We can compete and see who is the slow, careful pouring champion. I think I got a four out of five score. Well done me. And you get a little blueprint that's quite pretty actually. Uh, I've got to say this is a nice looking blueprint style thing. I'm not going to try again. I think I'm done. Now we do also have espresso mode, just to jump into that quickly. Now here, it's kind of problematic because what your choices are with these three espresso states are the way that the timing sort of starts and has an auto start and that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, auto tear, auto start. None of this is useful because none of the starts will correlate to your pump being switched on. It'll be correlated to liquid hitting a cup in some way or a cup going down on a scale and, and it being teared out, but none of it 
connects to your actual pump starting, which is the correct time to track your espresso from. So I don't really understand the why of this here, which leaves us with pour over mode. We've got a previous brew in here. Uh, let's design a recipe. We're gonna brew 30 grams. Uh, we're gonna brew a ratio of one to 17, but I can edit my water, which is nice. I'm gonna brew 30 to 500. So here we've got a suggested thing where it's gonna give us a two to one and then a 20 second bloom and then two pours of, of two varying speeds. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we get a, a uh, little flow rate thing here again. Let's go. Oh, bit aggressive, it says slow down, slow down. And then my little bean fills up and I know to stop and then it counts down the appropriate time to bloom. Let's just fast forward that. Now it's instructing me to brew at four mils a second here, which I probably didn't notice when I was designing the recipe. It's actually an incredibly slow brew rate. Let's go a bit quicker. Let's make it cross. Ooh, it's red. It's angry. I run out of water. That's okay. We're done. We're done. And so now we've actually got a, a sort of tracking of what happened. And then you can choose to save it if you want to. And the record is now saved. There's no tracking of, did you like it? Did it taste fruity or nutty or floral or any of that sort of stuff? It's just a track of this is a brew that sort of happened. That is, broadly speaking, the Haroya Jimmy. And now onto the Akaya, which is gonna be tricky. Now of the apps in my little coffee apps folder, Four of them belong to Akaya, which is an interesting, reasonably frustrating choice. And they all do different things. And some of them are more focused on this scale, which is extremely feature rich. And as I said, I'm not gonna have a chance to go into all of the things this thing can do, but I'll make sure there's links down below. So you have uh, obviously an updater, which is not hugely important right now. You've got an Akaya app, a Brewmaster app, and a Brewguide app. Let's begin with just the Akaya app. You have a feed of kind of um, social media stuff that I'm just not gonna go into and, and a very simple tracking type thing. So let's hit play and then we can track water going in. Can we hit play? No, we can't. I don't know why I can't hit play. Just let's reset everyone here. Let's tear you out. Let's go to a different app. And here is the problem. And this isn't actually Akaya's fault, this is actually the way iOS works. You would think that my phone and this scale are now connected. And so if I open, let's say, a different app like Brewmaster, then this, this app would be able to access this scale, but it can't. It can't because that connection is locked up inside the previous app. So if I try and add a scale, where are we? Settings, select an Akaya scale. There are, there are no scales in range. That's because this scale is no longer visible because it's connected to a different Akaya app. There's no way around this. You've got two choices. I can turn the scale off and back on again, which would kill the connection, or I can kill my previous app, or I could kill my Bluetooth on my device. All of this is ugly. All of this is a, is a hacky, unpleasant feeling thing to do. In this case, I'm gonna turn it off. I'll turn it back on again. Lo and behold, it's here inside my, my scale choices and I can connect to it, I can see it. I've got my information about all the stuff there and we're back and we're ready to go with our, with our brew. So now we can have, we can have a uh, brewing, but you're not connected anymore. Why, why are you not connected? Can't connect to scale, but you just were, you just said I'm connected. Select on a car scale. There are no scales in range. How are there no scales in range? We just went through this. We just connected. Deep soothing breaths. Deep soothing breaths. So now we're ready to brew. We're in the, the log a brew section. So we can hit start and this will produce, I hope, a nice little graphical portrayal of what's happening here. So you have a logged bar chart of flow rate and then you've got a kind of cumulative brew. Uh, that produces that kind of blueprint. That is, I think, their term. They coined it. it. Belongs to them. I know I've said it for other apps, but it's it's their thing, I think. Uh, and and again, very similar to everyone else's. You can see a nice little graph, and and everything is great. So there we go. That's done. So now we can save it. We can name it. We can do a whole bunch of stuff. That's good. We can add lots of things. A little smiley face, temperature, brew time, all of that kind of stuff is there. Oh, here we go. There we go. And I can take a photo. There we go. And that will be a tremendous photo 
to have in the future. I'll know exactly what that was at that point. So there is the app called BrewGuide. So one particular feature of this thing is that you can upload a recipe into the scale itself. The scale's large display at each stage will prompt you to do the next thing. And in theory, you can have this kind of prompting in the mornings without having to open an app. Now, of course, I can't connect these two because they're still connected with a previous app. So let me just uh, kill you. There we go, we're back again, tremendous. And now I can go in and I can select my app, upload, Okay, and then this, this guide gets uploaded. And then there is a brewing mode where I would invoke uh, the guide and everything would be great and it would do the prompting for me. And that's it. It's surprisingly slow to upload, I've got to be honest. This is ticking along pretty slowly. I can't imagine there's actually a ton of data here, but there we go, we're done. We're done, so the scale now knows uh, what we're doing and that's good, and it talks to me on its little display, and that's nice. But can you feel the lack of enthusiasm emanating from my body? Well, let's let's do a wrap up in just a second here. I do need to talk about the Brewista, which claims to be a smart scale, but does not connect to your telephone. And in doing so, I'll begin to wrap up and do a quick talk through of each device before telling you which is the one that I think is the best. Let's talk about the Browista. It is the, the uh, simplest of them. It doesn't connect via Bluetooth. It is uh, rechargeable via a nice little micro USB at the back. It is a traditional wave pan scale. So you have a solid base, you've got some real tactile buttons. Those are good things and a simple wave pan. The smartness of it revolves around some level of, of calculation around uh, ratios. Every time I use this, I have to go back and get the instructions out because it just defeats me with the way that it thinks. It drives me a little bit crazy. Where's my instructions? These are, these are the instructions that come with it um, that tell you how to use it, despite the fact that I've tried and, and failed many times. So auto mode. So place the brewing scale on the platform. After three seconds, it should zero out. Oh, it did. Uh, that took some time. That's not an intuitive thing. There's no countdown, there's no timer. It's not particularly obvious. Um, so now I can add my coffee. Let's pretend I've added, ooh, 33 grams of coffee. And now I push the ratio button. No, yes. Okay, and then that calculates for me my one to 16 ratio, which is great. So the kettle icon is here and I can start brewing and the timer should start automatically. The timer should start automatically. The timer should start, timer, no. I don't know what I've done wrong. I don't know how to make anything do what I want it to do. I'm just so defeated by these things. They're just, I, I could be just very stupid. Like I've got the instructions in front of me. I'm just not having a good time. And, and, ah, oh, look. Look, I'm gonna stop brewing right now. Get out of here. These are all examples of technology that exists because it can, not because it should. I don't really understand who they think is using these scales and these apps. Sure, there are some people that wanna track every brew, but there has to be a better way than fighting a Bluetooth connection before you've had coffee in the morning. Why we can't just have a scale that connects to Wi-Fi securely and then just has a log button on there. You know what I mean? Like if you wanna record it, just push record. And from that point onwards, the scale records what you're doing until you say stop, or you take the, the, the brewer off, or all that sort of stuff that's easy to detect. I don't want to have to find and use my telephone before I've had coffee. I don't. And I figure most people don't either. And I would say most people that have a smart scale don't use the app most of the time. By having these feature-rich scales that have two buttons that have to be used in a bunch of combinations, you make people feel stupid. I often feel stupid. I've often found myself stuck in a place where the display is doing something I don't understand and I don't know how to get back. Because, because there's no guidance on the scale. I can't remember the button combination I'm supposed to use. It's not natural, it's not intuitive to me. It's frustrating. And that's the case with all of these things. So, I'm gonna run through them quickly and I'll share my thoughts as a quick summary on each one. I'll try to keep it calm. So the Black Mirror. 
It has no markings anywhere on it, and that, frankly, is extremely frustrating. Trying to find the power button to turn on is incredibly annoying. It also has the single most irritating beep. Uh, I, I don't want to hear that beep that early in the morning. I will give credit to Akaya. They do a nice beep. This beep, it's not a good beep. I just wish the beep was less annoying. The scale, uh, I, I think, is, again, a little bit confusing. The two button shapes aren't particularly helpful. It doesn't feel particularly expensive, and it's not. I think it's the cheapest of all the scales here. The app is terrible. I, the only reason I have this scale is because it, it connects to my Decent Espresso machine, and that will be the only reason I keep it for any amount of time, though I know that John at Decent is working on his own set of scales for the future. This is, all in all, difficult to recommend. It's okay, it's just, it's just not very good. On paper, I quite like the Felicita Incline Scales. They're simple, they can be set up to do two things, which is time and wait, or just wait if you want to. The app is not particularly good, but that's okay. I can do most of what I need to do with it. It's just, therefore, a pretty expensive way to do it. I'm kind of using the same features I would have in the original Hario scale at close to twice the price. I can't recommend this in good faith, though, because Felicita, frustratingly, completely ripped off the shape and design of Akaya's lunar scales, and that is not okay. So these are kind of out of the contention from that perspective. The Brewster Smart Scales, I don't think are particularly smart. They're not particularly intuitive. I appreciate having a, a base and tactile buttons, though I don't particularly like the buttons on this that much. Uh, it's okay. It's just built to do a really specific thing, in a way that I don't really get on with. If this totally fits your workflow, you might have a nice time. It's interesting that for the same money as other scales here, it's about 100 pounds, it doesn't come with more features. That is not necessarily a criticism, it's just notable that it's the same price without the same kind of feature suite. There's no price of app development or maintenance going on behind the scenes here. It's okay. It's for pour overs and really nothing more. And that's kind of a shame, you know, like by confining the way it works, it reduces its broad usefulness. And then we have the Heroia Jimmy. This I think is actually interesting because they took a risk and they did something new and they had a scale where the display disconnects and it's a magnet so you can mount it on top of your espresso machine if you want to pull shots with it. But having it this way, having these uh, sort of five pin connectors here mean that neither part is waterproof. It's a traditional base and way pan so a style model, which again means electronics are exposed. So yeah, you can brew espresso with this, but bear in mind, you could damage and destroy an incredibly expensive thing. And that is so much money. For the money, I would expect a better app. For the money, I would expect it to be waterproof. For the money, I would expect a longer battery life than this currently gives. I respect that they've tried to do something new, the build, is great, it feels solid, it feels reliable. It's cool, but it's also nearly 300 pounds or dollars. That is, that is too much money. That is just too much money. And I, I, I can't strongly recommend something that's just that expensive when I'm not sure that you get two to three times the features of other scales. And that leaves me with this, the Akaya scales. And I would say Akaya, have set the bar for smart coffee scales. They changed the game with their original uh, set that kickstarted a few years ago, and they continue to really lead the pack. It's frustrating that they have so many apps and the nature of app connection is, is that way. It's frustrating that they spent a lot of time and dev money on features that I don't think, personally, are hugely useful. If you really want to track your brews, if you want to chart everything and have that data accessible, have that data available to share, this is easily the, the best choice. It's probably the only choice, I think. But I, I still just feel like they're doing things that don't need to be done, that creates a more cluttered, uh, confusing, frustrating experience as a normal user. I would be very hesitant to broadly recommend smart scales to everyone. If they fit a really particular need that you have, then yes, go for it. And I would say the Akaya is, is the best in class right now. But if you just wanna make coffee in the mornings, then I'm not sure you need a smart scale. I'm not sure you want a smart scale. That's my rant. That's my rant on the topic. I'd really be interested to know your thoughts too. In the comments, let me know, do you have a set of smart scales already? Do you use the apps that come with it all the time? Did you use them a few times and then stop? Did you never really use them at all? Do you think that there's something that I've missed about some of these scales? Do you think that there's some features that I didn't talk up enough, that I was unfair? 
I'd be really interested to know your thoughts. Share your comments down below. I look forward to reading them. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.